What's up, everyone? Don Elmer here. And so lately on the Fear Fans podcast, we've been uh, covering all of the Friday the 13th movies. But uh, now that we've covered the fourth film, the final chapter, even though it's not actually the final chapter. Yeah, so after covering uh, that film, we decided to uh, cover other movies. But I decided as far as reaction videos, I wanted to uh, go ahead and look at the top 20 Jason Voorhees kills from Watch Mojo. And Jason, throughout the years, since 1981, first appearing in Friday the 13th Part 2, Jason has given us, oh man, all kinds of brutal, messed up killings, and I'm interested to in see how Watch Mojo would rank them. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Jason Voorhees kills. Easiest moments ever. For this list, we'll be ranking the deadliest and most infamous instances where Jason Voorhees caused someone's violent demise. Since Jason doesn't do any of the killing in either the original Friday the 13th or Part 5, A New Beginning, right? those films will be omitted from this list. We're also giving a spoiler alert, although we kind of figured most of these characters wouldn't survive. Did we leave any out? Yeah. Let us know in the hey, comments. That's okay, I've only seen every single Number film. Number 20. Crushing Headache, Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. The climax to Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives sees a final confrontation at the grounds of the former Camp Crystal Lake. The surrounding area is renamed Forest Green by the town to avoid the negative connotations associated with the Voorhees murder sprees. Yeah, that worked but out well. Jason is drawn there nonetheless and continues his rampage. Yep. Sheriff Garris and his deputies Pappas and Thornton are on the scene while Tommy Jarvis is setting up a trap. And it's here where Jason commits a skull-crushing finale to one of the officers. Pappas puts five bullets into Jason with no effect. Voorhees grabs a skull, and a crackling sound fills the air. Oh, man. Yeah, like, this is supposed to be more brutal, but they had to cut that out because the MPAA. Garris later finds his deputy's body and the aftermath. Number 19, yep. ripped in half. Jason Goes to Hell, The Final oh, Friday. Oh, I think I know what they're talking about. Jason Goes to Hell is a somewhat underappreciated entry into the Friday franchise. Yeah. Largely maligned because of its decision to make Jason a supernatural force capable of possession. Yeah, kind of, they kind of went off the road with this one. We honestly appreciate the fact that it tried something different, although some things, well, some things remain the same. Yeah. Case in point, Voorhees hunting down anyone caught fornicating within a hundred yards of the hockey masked psychopath. Deborah and Luke find this out the hard way when Jason tears through their part. tent, coitus interruptus, and then tears through Deborah with a metal pole. Gross. Yeah. Number 18, oh, Trapped and Burn, Friday the 13th. Oh, yeah, this, one, this one was brutal, this death. Jason didn't commit any of the murders in the original Friday the 13th, this 2009 remake from producer Michael Bay goes a different route. Oh, yeah. Here, we have a fully grown Voorhees who's already machete deep in mommy issues, so he has no qualms about getting down to business stalking some unsuspecting young people. Amanda machete gets the worst of it early on and is trapped inside of a sleeping bag and left to be burned alive. Oh my god. The scene is mean spirited, not only due to Amanda's prolonged suffering, but also the fact that her boyfriend Richie has been laid out by a bear trap set by Jason and has to stand by and watch the entire thing play out. Yeah. Number 17. That was messed on the up. Dance floor. Friday the 13th, part 8. Uh, yeah. Jason takes Manhattan. Hey, Jason teleports in this movie quite a bit. Like there in this was scene. little room for character development by the time Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, hit the theaters in 1989. Yeah. At this point, half the cast is pretty much cannon fodder for Voorhees, yeah. such as the subject of our next entry, Eva Watanabe. The Th role of Watanabe right was an early one for the future Vampire Diary star Kelly Hu, and she serves oh. as a relatively sweet and undeserving victim of Jason's wrath. What? The scene itself is peppered with hallucinogenic imagery as Jason stalks her on the party deck of a cruise ship, with the overall effect being dizzying and disorienting. Here, it's not the manner in which Jason strangles Eva that's notable, but the execution, no pun intended, that's the real star. Yeah. Number 
number 16. Jesus. A despicable dude gets his due. Oh, Friday okay. the 13th. Trent. If Evil Watanabe got done dirty by Jason Voorhees, then Trent Sutton absolutely deserved everything that was coming to him in I, the 2009 Friday remake. I hated that guy. I would guy. probably leave soon before I get pissed off. And... Yeah. Yeah. What happens then? Trent is so obnoxious, antagonistic, and boorish that it's difficult to believe he has any friends at all. Never mind a really? group with which to go away for the weekend. Yet Sutton makes it through a lion's share of the film before finally meeting his maker, thanks to a well-timed toss from Jason. Trent is impaled on some spikes that were conveniently left upright on a pickup truck. Mm. And we just gotta be honest, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. No. <sighs> Number 15, oh, Corkscrew and Cleaver, Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Oh, Crispin Glover's Friday death. Friday the 13th, the final chapter, is largely lauded as a high point for the franchise. It retains the early entry's serious tone and gruesome special effects, while also boasting a likable cast, yeah. including Corey Feldman, Feldman as Tommy Jarvis. Crispin Glover's Jimmy Mortimer is a memorable character for a number of reasons. The first of which being an outstanding dance His performance dancing. early on in the film. <laughs> oh. Hey, how come you turned that off? Additionally, his death scene at the hands of Jason is still an effective shock as he shouts out loud for a corkscrew before getting it in the hand. Yep. Jimmy is then cleaved by Jason and we bid farewell to a standout series performance. Ted, hey, Ted, where the hell's Parks Grove? Right here. Oh, man. Number 14, Bedfold, Freddy vs. Jason. I hated this guy, too. Although Freddy vs. Jason is arguably more of an Elm Street movie, Trey. this didn't mean that I Jason Voorhees couldn't get in just as many memorable moments. Case in point, this fan-favorite kill that occurs early on in the film. As Freddy Krueger is still summoning up enough strength to revisit his old stomping grounds, Trey Cooper is the repugnant boyfriend of Gibbs Smith, and we pretty much hate him right from the jump. So what happens next doesn't really break our hearts. Nope. All right. He's stabbed. Let's go with energetically by Jason and folded in half while lying face down in a bed. Oh, man. We've heard of Craftmatic adjustable beds, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Number 13. Poor Shelley, Friday the 13th, Part 3. That guy was a goofball. Sheldon Shelley Finkelstein is one of the more beloved characters of the Friday the 13th franchise for a number of reasons. For starters, he's supremely likable, a genuinely good, if socially awkward, guy who the audience is rooting for the entire way. <laughs> Tragically, it's his death that serves as the means for Jason to acquire his iconic hockey mask. Yep. Since Shelley just couldn't him. leave his love of horror movies behind. And it ultimately costs him his life. That's right. <laughs> That'll teach you a valuable lesson. A beautiful girl like you should never go out in the dark alone. Finkelstein <laughs> uh, is trying his best to woo Vera by dressing up and scaring her. But it backfires, leaving him alone as Jason stalks in the shadows. Worse yet, when discovered by Chili, she still thinks he's faking. But he isn't. Get up! Nope, this time he's for real. Chili. No, nope, Chili, he's dead. I hated her acting in this. Number 12, RV Ride. Friday the 13th, oh, Part 6, this scene. Jason Lives. Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives is a fan favorite entry from the franchise. A movie that never takes itself too seriously while still providing many memorable scenes. This one in particular starts off with a little bit of humor but ultimately ends with one breathtaking and badass final shot. The amorous antics between Nikki and Court are largely played for laughs, as is the exaggerated manner in which Jason shoves Nikki's face into the bathroom mirror. Oh, this is great. Right here. The sequence ends, however, with Voorhees standing triumphantly atop the wrecked RV, a striking and fearsome image against the night sky as Crystal Lake's most feared killer makes his way home. This is the final thing that they filmed in that movie. J Jason lives. This scene. You better get off that before it blows up. Number 11. Crazy Ralph gets oh, him. Friday this. the 13th, part 2. Crazy Ralph was a mainstay for the first Friday the 13th film. 
A local right. kook who seems to know a bit about the history of Camp Blood and warns anyone and everyone to beware of its death curse. And yet he goes Pretty to that camp blood, ain't you? God damn it, Ralph, get out of here. Go on, get. Leave people alone. Never come back again. Oh, shut up, Ralph. It's got a death curse. That Classic said, Ralph. it's a shame Ralph couldn't be bothered to take his own advice since it's his own curiosity about the place that gets him killed in Friday the 13th yeah. Part 2. Why did you even he visit there? to the campgrounds after warning a new group of kids about the place's sour history, but is caught from behind by Jason and strangled with barbed wire. That's a bad way to go. <laughs> oh, man. Number 10, oh, Sheriff Garris. Yeah, I always thought that was pretty dumb. Like, uh... Yeah, Ralph is always warning people to stay away, and yet he doesn't stay away himself. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of dumb in hindsight. But, uh, yeah, he was a memorable character in the series. Um, yeah, rest in peace, uh, Walt Gorney, who played the character. So, all right, let's jump back, back into this. I'm sorry. Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. Oh, this guy. We mentioned earlier how Jason Lives is decidedly lighter in tone than many of its predecessors. This usually works in its favor, but there's nothing funny about the death of Sheriff Mike Garris late during the film's climax. That's because Garris doesn't play into the sort of hard-ass and stubborn caricatures of law enforcement that usually present themselves in horror movies. Instead, his motivations are primarily in the interest of keeping people safe, particularly his daughter Megan. Thus, when Jason literally folds Garris in half while the sheriff is trying to keep him at bay, we can't help but feel some real sympathy and grief for Megan at the loss of her father. Right. So it's been the rock, right? Because the bullets worked, and you, nine, you think that would? Bowling, Friday the 13th, Part 6. Same movie. Jason Lives. Conversely, this other scene from Jason Lives is absolutely played up for laughs. More An cannon fodder. An intentional and satirical take on the body count nature of slasher movies. Mm -hmm. Here, a group of weekend warriors are playing paintball in the woods and basically playing for keeps. Mm -hmm. Then, naturally, Jason Voorhees shows up and it all goes pear-shaped. Right there. bandanas that spell out dead take on a whole new meaning as Voorhees wastes his victims. And sure, these folks are relatively innocent, but we spend so little time getting to know them that their appearance and loss just washes over us in the blink of an eye. What's that? Triple decapitation right here. Nothing. I could swear I heard something. Here it comes. Oh, God. Be quiet. Number eight. Oh, they don't show it? Come on. Friday the 13th, part three. The third entry in the Friday the 13th franchise was an outlier for a number of reasons. For starters, it was the only film to have a bitch and disco theme as its main title. That's true. <laughs> uh, this was 1982, so... Beyond this, Friday the 13th Part 3 was also developed to cash in on the popular 3D craze of the time, with many seemingly pointless shots being included just to benefit from the technology. Yeah, exactly. However, one scene fans can all agree on is the eye-popping death of Rick Bombay late in the film. Everybody else has taken off and left us. You ain't do that. Well, I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to go outside and take a look around. We're actually led to believe that Rick might survive to confront Jason, but his hope is dashed when Voorhees strikes from behind, squeezing Bombay's head so hard that the eye pops out to the audience in over-the-top fashion. Yeah, this effect didn't really age well, but the head just looks like... Number seven, oh. Uppercut. Friday the 13th, part Again, eight. They don't Jason show takes Manhattan. Operator, this is an emergency. Give me the police. Oh, he wants you know, to make a call. You gotta go down to Jason Voorhees. You might as well go down swinging, right? Julius Goff finds this out the hard way as he gives Jason his best shot during their confrontation in Friday the 13th, Part 8. Jason takes Manhattan. Oh, he's going Rocky Balboa on him. But probably not a good idea to punch the mask, a hard surface like that. Prodigy actually gives Voorhees a few good licks before finally punching himself to exhaustion. Jason, slightly dazed at best, but still at full strength, no. then returns fire with a single punch of his own, literally knocking Gauze block off. It's a scene mm -hmm. many fans rewound again and again during the VHS video heyday. Not surprising. 
Don't tempt him. Take your best shot. Okay, Number there it is. Six, handstand no more. Friday the 13th, part three. You want a beer or not? Ah, Andy. Sure. All right, be right back. Okay. <laughs> the next entry on our list is memorable for its setup, execution, and the implications of what we cannot see from the frame alone. That's because the death of Andy Beltrami in Friday the 13th Part 3 is shown from an odd angle as a young man is looking up at Jason Voorhees while doing a handstand. Unfortunately, it's also the last thing Beltrami sees as Jason slices him in half in the most tender of areas, leaving us wincing at the very thought. Yep, exactly. You don't actually oh. see much gore oh, in the shot. scene, but its impact is still felt thanks to the interesting cinematography and sound design. Yeah. Number five. Okay, like uh, two things that were kind of dumb about that, about him uh, offering uh, Debbie a beer while you know she was in the shower. Uh, okay, first off, she's pregnant. You should not be giving pregnant women any beer. And second of all, you're walking on your hands. How do you expect to get have? A, how are you carrying your beer if you're walking on your hands? Wait, you just gotta hold onto it with your feet or something like? Yeah, I don't. I don't get that. I don't. I don't know what was going on in Andy's head, but uh, yeah, well, same old. But you know, same old horror trope. Don't and no premarital loving and no booze. So that's what that's what led to uh, both him and Debbie's deaths. So let's continue on. Goodbye, Alice. Oh. Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. The final girl trope in slasher movies was still being developed and explored in an embryonic way when Alice Hardy first made her scream and cheer in the original Friday the 13th. I have the uncut version of this and it's brutal. Her victory over Pamela Voorhees and subsequent survival made us appreciate how resourceful and capable she was as a heroine. Until this she became is Jason's part first of what victim. makes her demise in Friday the 13th Part 2 so bittersweet. Granted, her send-off is shockingly satisfying in a way, as she continues to convalesce at home after the events of the first film. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, Pamela's head is in the fridge, an ice pick is in Alice's head, and we have to bid adieu to one of our favorite Scream Queens. Mm -hmm. Oh, ice pick Number right through the four, temple. Sleeping bag. And, uh, sorry I'm pausing this so much, but uh, I just wanted to point out one thing. Yeah, Adrian King, uh, who played Alice in this, um, she played the character in the first movie, you know, it was here, obviously, but, uh, she wanted her character killed off, uh, in this because, uh, she wanted to give up acting, and because she was being stalked by a, a overly obsessed fan, and, you yeah, man, I, I just hate, hated that she was in that situation, you know, I'm just hoping, hope, really hoping she's doing well right now, yeah, but, uh, but they caught that creep, you know, that's, I'm just glad for that, but, uh, okay, anyway, let's move on, I'm sorry. Friday the 13th, part 7, The New Blood. It's a scene so beloved by fans that it was even parodied in Jason X over a decade later. That's right. Only the one in part seven was supposed to be much, much more brutal. To be fair, the sleeping bag death in Friday the 13th part seven, The New Blood, isn't performed with the same exaggerated comedic effect, but it's certainly effective nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Here it comes. Dan, what are you doing? Not Dan. Judy Williams wasn't a main character in the film. In fact, she's basically there solely as cannon fodder, a brief side mm -hmm. plot that exists to place another notch on Jason's belt. Her bright exactly. idea to hide in a sleeping bag from Voorhees gets the Darwin Award it deserves, being bashed <laughs> against a tree. Bye-bye, Judy. <laughs> Oh. Number three, Bed Spear, oh. Friday the 13th, part two. It seems as if the folks behind Friday the 13th, part Kevin two, Bacon. were so enthralled with the iconic Kevin Bacon bed sequence from the original that they just had to try it again. This time, however, director Steve Miner and crew took inspiration from the Italian Giallo and ripped oh. off a scene from Mario Bava's A Bay of Blood when shooting this death scene for this. lovers Jeff and Sandra. There's no denying the similarities as the couples are both impaled by a spear as they're in bed together. But the Friday folks probably figured no one would notice if they mimicked a comparatively obscure European import. We All see right. you though, guys. 
We see you. Oh, man, that's gruesome. Number two, Machete, Friday the 13th, part oh, two. Mark, I liked him. Vicky, is that you? Okay, so we admit it. We're horrible people. We're those kids who, like Julius' death earlier on our list, rewound this bit over and over again on our VCRs. And truthfully, we feel bad about it because Mark Jarvis certainly didn't deserve what happened to him in Friday the 13th Part 2. Yep. This was still at the point in the series where most Friday films had likable characters. So when wheelchair user Mark gets a machete to the face and rolls down an unfairly long set of stairs, it comes as kind of a shock. Yeah. And to be honest, we're not entirely sure if the filmmaker shot this scene as intentionally humorous or simply spiteful. But it remains one of the most iconic Friday moments. They just repeated that same shot. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our okay. channel. Okay, what's number one? Let's see it. Notified about our latest videos. I think I have a good you idea what it is. have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, liquid nitrogen. Jason X. Oh, okay. This is a different point it's I was expecting. It's rare that an entry so late in a horror franchise would contain such a memorable high point. But here we are in 2001 with Jason X and an absolutely killer scene. That pun is definitely intended too, because fans oh, yeah. just couldn't stop talking about this kill when Jason X first debuted. For starters, it's gruesome and sort of stands apart from the comparatively light tone of the film's jokey outer space premise. <laughs> Additionally, the execution of this scene where intern Adrian Thomas Hart has her face plunged into liquid yeah. nitrogen I and then smashed is effectively troubling and graphic. Yeah. Jason X may not be a perfect film, but this kill is as perfect as Voorhees ever achieved throughout his entire cinematic career. Oh. Then smack. Do you agree with our picks? Okay. Check out this other recent clip from... Yeah, I do agree with them. That was a pretty brutal death. I mean, um, yeah, I just felt bad for that girl. She felt she All she was doing was, like, you know, working in the lab. She was a student. She was taking, the, like, her position in the lab seriously and didn't really deserve to die. But, uh, yeah, that was pretty That was pretty messed up. And, like, no liquid nitrogen, that stuff is no joke. It's, like negative 300 degrees yeah i mean obviously you don't stick your hand in there I mean, that goes without saying but uh yeah they, there were several um there were several deaths that i'm surprised they didn't put on here like uh the, the death of that uh of that uh, teacher in uh par in a jason takes manhattan you know drowning him in sewage obviously you can see why jason is one of the most brutal villains in horror history yeah this guy holds nothing back he, it's like if he spots you, he want in, in his territory. You he, he wants you dead. He will pursue you with, with like pre teleportation, whatever it takes. You, you you know, don't bother running. You're already dead. So hope you guys enjoyed my reaction to the top twenty Jason Voorhees kills. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe to my channel for more content. And if you have any suggestions for what I should check out in the future, just let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.